Hello and welcome to STEM with Mr N, where I perform different demonstrations and explain the science behind what we're seeing. This week I'm filming at the Summerlee Museum of Scottish Industrial Life and I'm exploring steam engines. Let's check it out. The earliest recorded steam-powered engine was the Aeola Pile, described by Hero of Alexandria, a Greek mathematician who was living in Roman Egypt at the time. This was a turbine that would spin when the water tank attached to it was heated up. There were many other steam engines that came after that, until Thomas Savory, considered the father of the modern steam engine, invented his steam engine in the 1600s. This was then improved upon by Thomas Newcomen and further improved upon by James Watt, who in 1764 vastly improved the amount of work that a steam engine could do. In the 1800s and 1900s, steam engines powered the factories of the Industrial Revolution. There were also steam-powered trains, such as the one I'm standing on just now, steam-powered boats and even ships. The Titanic was a steam-powered ship and people even made steam-powered cars. So, how does a steam engine actually work? Well, you've probably watched a kettle boiling, and when you were watching that, you'll have seen steam coming out of it. Watching a kettle boiling is a good way to understand the process that is involved in moving a steam engine. In a steam-powered locomotive such as this one, there would be a fire pit and a fireman would be shoveling coals into it, which would heat up to around 1,400 degrees Fahrenheit. This would boil the water in a tank next to it, and as the water was boiling, steam would be produced. The high pressure of this steam would then come out of the water tank and start moving turbines and pistons which would help move the wheels of the locomotive. So now that we've explored how a steam engine works, I'm going to go home and show you a way that you can make a simple model steam engine based on that Aeola pile as described by Hero of Alexandria. To make the model steam engine, you will need some copper tubing, some corkboard coasters, a tea light, a lighter, something to cut the tubing with, mine's thin enough that I can use scissors, and a bowl of water. First I'm going to take the copper tubing and straighten some of it out. Then I'm going to wrap it twice round my tea light, leaving two long straight edges at either side to give me a tight coil in the middle. This is going to leave me with excess tubing at either side, and I want that coil to sit in the flame. I'm going to see how much tubing that I need to cut off the side by checking how high the tea light sits when it is on top of one of my coasters. Then I'm just going to use a pair of scissors because I'm using very thin copper tubing and cut off the excess tubing, leaving me with two straight edges at either side that are a bit shorter now and still that coil in the middle. Then I'm going to take a corkboard coaster and using a pen I'm going to mark it where those two straight edges come down so I know the width of my engine. Using a spare piece of copper wire, I'm going to put holes through where I have marked it on this cork board. The reason I'm using a spare bit of tubing is because the cork board can clog the tubing and I don't want it to clog my engine. Then I'm going to take the tubing that I've put the coil in and push those two straight ends through the holes that I have just made. I'm going to put a small bend in the end of each of those pointing in opposite directions and this is to control the movement of my steam engine. I'm going to take that tubing back out of the coaster and I'm going to suck up some water from my bowl of water through the tubing and this is to fill water into that coil. The water will taste a bit metallic but it is okay because it is only a small amount of water that's going into my mouth. Then I'm going to put the tubing back through those two holes in the corkboard which can be a bit tricky because of the bends in the copper tubing and sometimes a little bit of water might come out but it is not too hard to do. Finally, I'm going to set a tea light in the centre of the coaster, float all of this in the bowl of water, light the tea light and watch what happens with my steam engine. After a short time, my steam engine starts to slowly turn in one direction and this is what I expected to see. So how is this steam engine actually working? Well, like a real steam engine, I am using the heat from the candle to boil the water inside the copper tubing. As that water boils, it produces steam, and the steam works its way round the coil and out one side of the tubing. As it is pushing its way out, that is what is making the steam engine turn in one direction. 
Mine was turning very slowly because I'm using very narrow tubing and it is quite a large coaster. By using wider tubing or by using a smaller coaster, this engine might spin faster, but I still saw what I expected to see, which was the engine turning slowly in one direction. This model is based off the Aeola pile as described by Hero of Alexandria that I mentioned earlier, but it is nothing like the steam engines that came later, started by Thomas Savory in the 1600s with his engine pumping water out of the mines, before later developments led to the Industrial Revolution. When the internal combustion engine came along, which proved much more fuel efficient and better for the environment than steam engines, steam engines started to go out of use, although sometimes steam is still used as a source of power today. Well, that's all for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. A huge thank you to the Summerlee Museum of Scottish Industrial Life for inviting me to film there. Summerlee Museum is an excellent place to visit either on your own or with family and it is free to enter. Summerlee Museum is situated in Coatbridge around the site of the 19th century Summerlee Ironworks and a restored section of a branch of the Monklands Canal. The main exhibition hall contains replicas and artefacts of Scottish transport, engineering, leisure, street and school life and more, as well as a tea room and gift shop. Outside is a reconstruction of a traditional miner's role which shows off the domestic conditions of the mining family from the 1840s to the 1980s. Just by the cottages in Miners Row is a Summerlee Coal Company pithead site, complete with a recreated mine that shows off the cramped and damp conditions in which the miners worked. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like and subscribe buttons to stay up to date on all future content. And as always, I would like to take this opportunity to answer any science questions you have about any science topics at all. So feel free to email me at stemwithmrn at outlook.com and I'll get back to you with answers to your questions. You can subscribe to the channel by pushing the button here, and I've added links here to the other STEM demo and explanation videos I do, here to my STEM career interviews, and here to my series on 100 scientists who influence the world. This has been STEM with Mr N, exploring steam engines.